Well, we were much better off. Uh, actually, we were better off before the Fed. Uh, you know, the United States people hate central banks. We had two that we got rid of before the Federal Reserve was created in 1913. But the first bank in the United States we got rid of in 1812. The second bank we got rid of in uh, 1836 under President Andrew Jackson. From 1836 to 1913, there was no Fed. And it was the greatest period of prosperity, low inflation, invention, efficiency, you know, almost in recorded history. So we, we get along fine without the Fed and uh, and we're much better off with uh, with the gold standard, no, no doubt about it. You know, when you said economists criticize gold, I would just remind the audience of two things. Number one, economists are wrong about almost everything. So if you actually look at their track record in that sense, they, they seldom get things right. Certainly the Fed uh, never gets the forecast right. Um, and I wrote a book uh, that, which I know you're familiar with, The New Case for Gold. But that book is not just another book on gold. I, I specifically refuted, there's seven or eight persistent criticisms of gold that you hear over and over again. They're all wrong. And I just took them one by one and said, here's why it's wrong, here's why it's wrong. And so that's kind of the baseline in terms of understanding why we're better off with the gold standard. So the economy thrived better under a gold standard than sure. the fiat, fiat monetary system. And now, would you argue that the greatest point in favor of the gold standard is that the Fed wouldn't be able to expand or retract the money, uh, monetary supply as much or as little as they want? Well, not as much as they want. That, that's a very good point. People say, well, you know, the standard criticism is wrong, but the standard criticism is, you know, the great thing about the Fed is they can do that. They can expand the money supply and contract the money supply as needed to keep inflation under control or to grow with the economy. Well, you can have that with a gold standard. In fact, we did from 1913 to 1971 in various ways. Uh, we had a gold standard, but we also had discretionary monetary policy. The Fed was expanding and contracting the money supply from 1913 to 1971 and we had a gold standard so they're not incompatible at all uh but it but it does mean that you can't go you can't go too far uh so it kind of puts a lid on things until 19 um 1945 uh the law in the united states was the the base money supply m0 that's what the fed controls could be two and a half times the u.s gold uh hoard the gold uh, in our possession at the market. So taking originally $20.67 an ounce, later $35 an ounce, take the amount of gold times $35 an ounce and whatever that number was, multiply by two and a half, and that's how big the money supply could be. But uh, so you can't go beyond that. But I, I actually talked to Ben Bernanke about this because I was, you hear over and over, you know, the gold caused the Great Depression. Gold was the problem in the Great Depression. And I researched it. And actually, the leading scholar after Milton Friedman was Ben Bernanke. And he showed with you know very uh, precise detail that the money supply during the Great Depression never exceeded 100% of the gold. Uh, in other words, the money supply could have been two and a half times greater than it was in the Great Depression with a gold standard. So gold was never a constraint. The Fed screwed it up, the Fed messed it up badly, but it had nothing to do with gold because they were nowhere near the ceiling. And when I, when I talked to Bernanke, I said, you know, uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, I said, this is my understanding of your research. Do I have it right? Do I have a correct understanding? He said, yes, you do. So, so gold was never a problem in the Great Depression. So you can have both. You can have a gold standard and discretionary monetary policy. You just can't get crazy. So I know we've spoken in past interviews about the likelihood of us returning to a gold standard. I know you said it's probably very unlikely, even though there have been some politicians who have been vocal and pushing forward for this. What would a new Bretton Woods system look like for you? Is it tied to or is it involving digital currencies then, Jim? What do you think? Well, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion about digital currencies and people think of Bitcoin and, and all that. But the central banks are moving towards central bank digital currencies, which are not cryptocurrencies. They're, they, the message traffic can be encrypted, but, you know, a digital dollar is still a dollar. A digital euro is still a euro and a digital yen is still a yen and so forth. The central banks would still, you know, have discretionary authority over monetary policy. It's just that you probably wouldn't have any paper money. Um, and payments in a digital dollar, for example, could be faster and cheaper than what we have today. You know, we all use credit cards. That's an electronic payment. But there's a merchant acquirer fee of two and a half percent on, uh, you know, when you charge something, the merchant gets two and a half percent less than what you pay because they have to pay that amount to a processor to get their money. Uh, well, you could probably eliminate that. So it would make payment systems cheaper. Um, we might have 
wallets at the Fed. We might, you know, uh, Jim and uh, Daniela and the artists might have a, an account at the Fed. You could just intermediate the banking system. But that's not inconsistent with gold. In fact, I've written recently about how, um, you know, we're going to be walking around with 400 ounce bars in our pockets and purses. No, obviously probably won't even have a you know a bag or a purse of eight gram coins which was true prior to world war one but why couldn't you have a digital uh gold-backed currency before we continue help us clicking that youtube like button and subscribe now to our channel this shows the algorithm that you valued this information and it helps us spread that message sharing is caring and now let's continue uh, in fact, some versions of that already exist. So all you're doing, you put the gold in a safe place outside the banking system. You have an account, you send them the money, they buy the gold, there it is. And then you use your debit card in, in gold. Just entertain us for a second here, Jim. Uh, let's pretend we were on a gold standard today. Right. What greatest problem would it eliminate? Well, it depends how you do it. And this is the problem with gold standard. Gold standards have failed in the past, as we know. Uh, and governments always make the same mistake, and it's a mistake you have to avoid, which is they get the price wrong. When you go on a gold standard, you're fixing a parity between, say, dollars and weight of gold. You're, you're, you're measuring weight of gold in dollars. So it's, it's no different than any other cross rate. If you have the euro US dollar cross rate or the dollar yen cross rate, well, this is just going to be a dollar gold cross rate with the gold measured by weight. But you got to get the price right. So uh, could you do it at $1,800 an ounce, which is about the current price? Well, legally you could, but that would be a fiasco because it's highly deflationary. In other words, um, you people say you can't have a gold standard because there's not enough gold to support commerce and leverage and uh, industrial and commercial loans and the whole financial system, there's not enough gold. That's nonsense. There's always enough gold. It's just a question of price. Now, could you do it at $1,800 an ounce? No. But could you do it at fifteen thousand dollars an ounce? Yes. So if you said, okay, you know, Jim, you're, you're in charge of going back to the new gold standard. Let's uh, have be a convening power and get the G7 and the G20 finance ministers together and have a new Bretton Woods type conference. Maybe we, I'm, I'm here in New Hampshire. Maybe we could do it up at Bretton Woods, which is just a little <laughs> bit up the road than that Washington hotel. But the point is, uh, the big there are a lot of technical issues, but the biggest single issue they would face is getting the price right. And I've calculated it several different ways and the, the low end is fifteen thousand dollars an ounce that's one of the reasons i make that my forecast because we right. might have an orderly process the kind i just described where you, you convene you convene the session get g20 finance minister and you do it right i don't think that's going to happen i think what's going to happen is the system's going to fall apart there's going to be a, a panic style loss of confidence in not just dollars but euros and yen and all, all central bank command currencies and they're going to have to do it in, on an emergency basis. So you're going to get there either way. But the, the number one question is, what's the price? And I can guarantee if there were to be an emergency meeting, you'd be the first person they'd call. As well, the hopefully. I've, I've already done the math, so I can tell. I can give them the answer <laughs> five minutes. Okay. Uh, final thought, Jim. I know you're uh, enjoying family time. I don't want to take you away from them. Uh, just last point. I said it's the 50th anniversary an important event here. I guess a major lesson we should we should learn from 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 this or you know from being on the gold standard that we can perhaps apply to today's economy. Well, uh, everyone remembers August 15, 1971. You know, Richard Nixon ended the gold standard kind of, but not exactly. What he did, he said foreign trading partners can no longer redeem dollars uh, no longer redeem dollars for gold. He said but they were the only people who could. Uh, gold was contraband since 1933. American citizens couldn't own it. Um, and so he said he can no longer, and he said it was temporary. If you go back and watch that Sunday night speech, August 15th, 1971 was a Sunday. They interrupted Bonanza, which is the most popular TV show in America at the time. Um, but Nixon said it's temporary. And I spoke, actually, I spoke to Paul Volcker about it. And I spoke to Kenneth Dam, who was uh, dean at the University of Chicago Law School. He was there. He was, uh, Volcker and Dam were both in, um, uh, Camp David, which is where they, they cooked this up with Nixon. So I got firsthand accounts and they said, we thought it was temporary. We we're going to have a new Bretton Woods, go back to gold. And it just never happened. Wow. So, so the, the lesson is, but that happened in stages. It started in World War One. They said, give us all your gold, we'll give you paper money, but don't worry, you can redeem it. Then they melted it all down into 400 ounce bars and said, well, we're going to leave it in the vaults of the banks. 
Then the central banks took it from the commercial banks, so there was no more gold for anybody. Then the treasuries and the finance ministries took it from the central banks. The, the Federal Reserve has a gold IOU on their balance sheet. It's the first item on the asset side because the treasury owns the gold. Everyone thinks the Fed owns the gold, treasury owns the gold. And then, and then uh, Roosevelt uh, made a contraband. Americans couldn't have it. Um, and then only foreign trading partners could get it. Nixon ended that in 1971. So my point is, August 15th, 1971, a very big deal. But the lesson is, that happened in stages over about 40 years. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.